All right, hello and welcome to Redwall Cavern in the Grand Canyon. Here on a river trip with some friends. We're on our first day. Thanks for joining me. I'm geology professor Sean Wilsey down here in the Grand Canyon, one of the most amazing geologic places on earth, undoubtedly. Uh, and we've come down about 30 or so miles down the river uh, through different successive stratigraphic layers. And now we're in this very thick unit known as the Redwall Limestone, a Mississippian aged um, deposit from the bottom of the ocean that's around 320 or so million years old. Um, this, all this material was deposited at the bottom of the ocean during a time and a position where we had very warm tropical seas, um, lots of biologic activity, uh, different exoskeletons of marine organisms, Yeah, and so in the Grand Canyon, this forms one of the most resistant layers, one of the biggest cliffs, uh, largely an impenetrable cliff throughout the Grand Canyon. And Redwall Caverns is just an immense, huge overhang right along the riverbed. Um, and you can see a few things why it might have formed. Well, one is that the Redwall limestone, like a lot of limestones, has caves in it. And so it's dissolved by acidic groundwater. And so in different places along the river, you'll see uh, small little caves, sometimes bigger ones as well. There's a little bit of one right about over here across the river, one a little bit above it right there and there, there's two. Um, so this may have formed as initially a, a cave. Uh, and then as the river eroded deeper and deeper, the other reason we have this big cavern is you can see the river moving towards us, but it actually takes a big bend right here and so periods of high water and flooding when the water's coming down this corridor the water would rise up into this cavern and you can see uh, all the sand that's been deposited here and probably the sand and the boulders transported along the outer bend of the river uh, has eroded back some of the limestone just the the sediment abrading that over time gouging it out and undercutting uh, this big cavern. It's a little hard to fit it all in uh, the camera. So maybe I'll try coming down here to the river and looking back into it. Uh, and then maybe we'll go look for a couple of the fossils that we often find uh, in the Redwall limestone. So again, looking down the corridor, just beyond the boats down here, you can see another cave in the Redwall. Uh, and then we can see the, the Supai group, the Pennsylvanian kind of ledgy sands and mudstones through here. Uh, and then above that, a, a light colored layer that's the Coconino sandstone with their hermit shale below it. And then the Kai Bab and Torweep formations up on the rim. So here I'd, I'd guess the river is maybe about 2000 feet deep, uh, give or take. Um, and as we head further downstream, of course, the, the canyon will get deeper and deeper, but um, hopefully a little better view of the immensity of Redwall Cavern, um, I would guess from the lip of the cave out here all the way to the back end where some of our crew is back there it might be um, a good 100 feet or so, maybe 80 feet, maybe like, uh, what would that be, like maybe 30 meters, something like that. So it's incredibly overhung. You can see some of the layering here in uh, the Redwall itself as well and then one of the characteristic things in the redwall limestone is the chert that it contains and so in and amongst all these limestone beds there's also hardened layers of chert which is a a silica rich material and so that's what's forming a lot of the more browns we're seeing down here uh, everything down here has been really well sculpted and smoothed by high waters, high water uh, erosion and the sand that comes through here. Um, but you get these chirp beds that were also accumulating out in the ocean at the time of the Redwall dep deposition as well. And again, so we can see not just the big cave like we looked at downriver, um, but even some of these smaller ones that are forming along the layering in the bedding, the layering, the depositional layering 
with the limestone as well. Um, some of these have been filled in by mineral material, but in places we can see this again, very hard brownish chert layer that's much harder uh, than the limestone. Uh, just really fantastic. Just another kind of up and over view of the Redwall limestone. Let's walk to the back of it real quick, give you a sense of how big it is from the back. And then let's see if we can find some fossils. I'll maybe spend a minute or two looking for some of the invertebrate fossils that are common in the red wall. As you can see, the high water level deposited a lot of the sand that's up in here, which makes it a great place to stop, get out of the sun, uh, or maybe get out of the, the rain as well. Looks like we also have some some calcite nodules so these are uh the mineral that mainly forms the calcite or excuse me the limestone is a mineral called calcite and in this case we've got some calcite crystals precipitating in this kind of void here looks like there's another really nice one right in here um so yeah like a lot of diversity in and amongst the redwall limestone so this thing probably doesn't see as much water coming up this high anymore with the uh, dams upstream. Maybe only during the most high water years where they're releasing more water downstream. So it's probably been a number of years since this thing was actually flooded to this point. But we'll head back here give our group a little bit of space and then maybe give you a sense of how big the cavern is looking back out towards the entrance so i'm just kind of backing up uh, as far as i can and giving you a sense of it here so let's go see if we can find some fossils and then we'll um wrap up this little segment all right so we have a boulder here in the red wall limestone with some of the fossils that we thought we could look at here. So here we have a, a crinoid stem. It looks like in this slab, which was the best thing I found for fossils, um, the best or the most prevalent fossil are these sort of Cheerio-shaped uh, features here. These are invertebrates called crinoids. These are, you can look these up on the internet. They're sometimes called sea lilies, but they're not plants. They're actually invertebrates. They grow on the bottom of the ocean. A whole column of these segments here, these stems, um, and you can see in places here where there's a whole, a whole stem put together. There's one up here, another one here that's actually been cut open. And then when they break apart into individual segments, that's when they look like these little rounded uh, washers or Cheerios in here. But this slab nicely shows some of the fossils we see here in the red wall. There's other invertebrates that are common as well. Here's another stem down here another section there but for me the only thing i'm seeing in this little slab is mostly crinoid fossils um, but sometimes we get horn corals brachiopods bryozoans uh, this rock was all deposited in an environment where we had uh, incredible productive shallow marine uh, biologic organisms so just imagine like a reef or belize or some great barrier reef in australia some tropical setting where there's just all this uh, marine life thriving and then those organisms dying and these uh, shells and such kind of falling down to the seafloor and then accumulating so hopefully that was helpful uh, thanks again for joining me we're going to head on down river uh, sean wilsey here from redwall cavern in the grand canyon one last view stand up of the river and the canyon <laughs>